Okay, say hello to good old Wendy and his two guardian friends. Um, the two guardians work again exactly the same as the Seymour boss battle, so it might be in your best interest to to get some status effects in there. And the pushover thing about this guy is he is... So the thing about this guy is he, he has no immunity to pretty much anything, so you could use pretty much all of your status effects and most of them will work. So what I'm going to do is, uh, since Riku has a full overdrive, I'm going to make use of that and I'm going to do one of her status effect mixes and hopefully that should take these two out and also put Wendy under some negative status effects. So yeah, let's just uh, get Riku to do her thing. On one of the previous videos I already shared um, a link to a list of all possible combinations so just go in there and find something that's going to create negative status effects. It's always a, a logical move to use something that has status effects in it anyway like a sleeping powder and just mix it with anything really. Again the more powerful the item the, the more damage you're going to do but let's see what happens. Okay, so that was one of the shitter ones. So you probably shouldn't mix the power spheres, you get something a little bit more powerful. Wow, that taught me a lesson. So use more powerful items here. But, as you can see, he's asleep. So that's pretty poor. But remember, if you try to, if you try to do stuff without taking out the guardians first, then you're going to be fighting a losing battle because they will try to heal their friend. See? This is what I mean, so you need to be careful. Oh, why didn't I just use a more powerful item that would have made the battle so much easier? Uh, um, I guess I'll have to do this the long way. But their magic is pretty weak, as you can see. Nice. Okay. He still has his auto potion ability, so. I mean, honestly, if you can put a boss uh, under sleep, then that just it just makes it way too easy. Let's use Drain for a bit of extra damage. Excellent. Okay, let's see if Sleep Touch is good enough here. Yeah. Yep, even sleep touch. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. This guy absolutely sucks. But he does have shell, which will make which will mean it'll take a little bit longer. So there you go, you can do that with uh with Kimari too. Which is pretty nice. Um, I guess we can We can probably summon here and do a bit of extra damage. But there is a good chance he will knock out <laughs> your Aeons because he's pretty strong. That's the only thing he has going for him and he has Berserk status as well, so he does hit like a truck, so you need to be careful of that. But no one else has any magic attacks, so I have to... If you use items, you can... You don't have to wake him up either. Running out of Electro Marbles. So, I mean, it's just delaying the inevitable, really. What was this guy's rare steel? I don't remember. There 
And as you can see, um, Shell is not affecting the damage he takes, so those items have a fixed amount of damage, so that's nice as well. So Shell is not going to help. Might as well use attack reels. I'm going to let it have a few swings at me just so you can see how strong he actually is. 800, 900, that's good. Whoa, he only has 96 HP left. Good grief. When did attack reels get that strong? Bloody hell. Okay. Let's have Auron out here. He's less likely to, to die from this hit. Wow, he missed his one attack. Really? Come on, I'm going to let you throw one punch before I defeat you. Okay, he's missed two. Is his accuracy really that bad that even Auron and Kimari can evade him? Whoa, okay. So 1-3-2-3 three, three there, even though Waka was defending. So that's pretty, that's pretty strong. 2,600 damage. So that's going to hurt. Yeah, might as well use Energy Blast just to get that overkill. So like I said at the start of this session, this, um, this section of the game does really ramp things up. So three boss battles in a pretty short space of time. But now there's going to be a lull in boss battles. We're not going to have a boss battle for quite some time. Understandably, obviously. Okay, so a lot of story stuff coming out. So I think he got pissed off at all of those um, comments I hurled at him. So he decided to break the ice and we've all gone flying down to the bottom of the lake. Praise be to Yevon. That's what I would have said if I was a follower of Yevon. We were all there, and in one piece. Even if I had a headache from wondering what was in store for us next. Yep, a lot of uh, conversations can be had in this section. So have them. And Kimari is pretty epic here as well, actually. We're under the lake ice, aren't we? Yes. I'll say who knows. I always say maybe, but I'll say who knows this time. Look, that's the bottom of the temple. <sighs> We've fallen a long way. There's a lot of these kind of fallen buildings and cities that we've seen so far. What now, I wonder? What now? Uh, you act first and think later, don't you? I mean, can't you be a little more responsible? We're all depending on you, you know? A lecture. No, no, no. <laughs> Just a suggestion. You should place trust in your friends. But you can't expect someone to protect you all the time. You would do well to remember that. Is that a lecture? It's advice. Dude, one does not simply lecture Oren. So now we're the traitors that killed a maester. Oren gives lectures. He never gets lectured. But he was not always like this. <sighs> hey, Waka, would you cheer up? 
Look, we only did what we had to do. It doesn't matter. Don't you see? I've always walked the path of Yevon. But now, I'm a traitor. How could this happen? Damn! It's not Riku's fault either. Huh? You don't know how I feel. Hmm. I think we're starting to we're starting to see some cracks in uh, in Waka's faith. So you know, this is a catalyst that will you know start to lead to him questioning his religion more than he has been throughout his life so far. You know, this whole thing with the with the Maester, someone that he really placed his trust in. If something like this has happened, then uh... I'm sure Yuni's okay. She's breathing fine and all. How are Lulu and Waka? Hmm. Well, Waka's in shock. Can't blame him either. And Lulu? Well, she's just the same as always. She's so together. All grown up, I guess. I guess. Well, just give me five or six more years. So, Kamari, how do we get out of here? Hey, don't change the subject. We climb. Kimari too. Only those who try will become. Huh? I think he means you have to work hard if you want to be like Lulu. Oh, I will. Kimari think Riku should stay Riku. Huh? Hey! Are you saying I'll never be like Lulu? Kimari! <laughs> How could you laugh at a time like this? <sighs> Yuna? Another excellent little speech from Kimari there. I wanted to confront Maester Seymour about his father, Lord Jiskel. I wanted to convince him to turn himself in to Yevon's judgment. In exchange for marriage? Yes, if that's what it took. So, what did Seymour say? He didn't say anything. Now, I... now I don't even think it was worth it. I should have told you what I was going to do. Enough! Dwelling in the past is futile. Hey! You don't have to say it like that! You want to waste time listening to her regrets? You don't have to say it like that. Our immediate concern is Yuna's pilgrimage. Are you willing to go on? Yes. But then, do you think Yevon will allow it? The Faith are the ones that give power to the Summoners. Not the Temples or the Teachings. If the Temples try to stop us, then we will defy Yevon if we must. Whoa! I can't believe you said that! Sir Oren? Count me out. We have to atone to make up for the sins we have committed. Of course, it's not like I ever liked Maester Seymour, yeah? No way I'll ever forgive him for killing Lord Jisco. And for trying to do us all in two, you know? But still, the bunch of us going against Yevon? No way! But still, we have transgressed and must face our punishment. We must go to Bevel. We must speak with Maester Micah and explain what has happened. There is no other way, I think. I agree. Uh. Sir Oren? So it is decided. Will you come with us? I am the troublemaker, after all. Yeah, that's right! You can always count on Aaron to complicate things. Yeah! Kamari roars and Aaron runs off, and... 
I never asked you to follow me. Hey, but that's what friends are for. Right? Yep. Thank you. Huh? Friends, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Man, how can you all act like nothing's wrong? Must got nerves of steel or something. You're too edgy. Listen to the hymn and calm down. <laughs> I do love the scenes here. And I find Waka to be the most, like, full of expression. I mean, having played the HD remaster, I think some of the people, you know, some people complained about the characters not really having as much expression in their face as maybe we wanted them to, and I think Waka is the one that probably still shows it the most. And I think that's just because it, he was the same in the PS2 version as well, that he seems to have these moments where he's able to show his emotions more so than the other characters. But yeah, we've got <laughs> Oren the Troublemaker, who's uh, straight up just saying, I don't care about Yevon and the teachings, you know, we're just going to go and do our thing, I don't care what anyone else thinks. And at the end of the day, for a guy who has seen so much, and know so much about the world it's interesting how dismissive he is of, of Yevon and how he just um, you know he doesn't mind defying you know the religion so that's interesting but we have a few more conversations oh yeah and also it's a shame that Kimari's uh, excellent line there only those who try will become kind of got swamped by you know Oren being Oren and you know Waka's um, you know seeing all that kind of stuff but Personally, that only those who try will become is one of my favorite quotes of the entire game. And I'm so glad that someone like Kimari kind of said that, because that's the kind of thing that Oren would say. But Kimari's wisdom really shines through there. So, like I said, it, his, uh, his development and his awesomeness is not shown very often. But when it is, it's, uh, it's pretty effective. It's a shame that Riku didn't quite get it, but um, I really do like Kimari's little scene that he had a minute ago. Is that coming from the temple? Yes, it is Yevon's gift. It soothes the hearts of the faithful. I think it just soothes the hearts in general. It's just a really soothing piece of music. The, the, the words are quite interesting as well, if you, can, if you want to look it up online and find the translation to the lyrics. Say, you feel something weird in the air. Some kind of bad vibes or something. Yep, Titus and Waka tend to think alike. They've got a sixth sense for this kind of thing. I thought so. I can't go any further here. I'm just wondering if, other than that treasure chest, is there anything more? Then just open that just in case. Because I think it's going to be once you talk to everyone, then, um, then it's going to trigger the next cutscene. Is there one here? Yes, there is. Okay. Ooh. Thank God, I, I was certain I was going to miss something. I'm glad I found that one. Let's have a quick look at the weapons. Because we've got some interesting weapons. Sorry, I'm talking over this uh, awesome hymn of the faith, but I'm sure you can find it on YouTube if you want to listen to it. How about that? Counter-attack. So whenever, an, whenever a worker receives any physical damage from an enemy, then uh, he's going to retaliate with an, with an attack of his own. It won't work against magic attacks, but physical attacks, so like, you know, the wolves and uh, the, the shelled enemies, dragons, all those kind of guys, when they attack Oren, uh, Waka, he will fight back. And Tyler's just got the same weapon as well. So these are, these are nice abilities to, to have on a weapon. The one up from this is something called Evade Encounter, so he will uh, almost always evade the physical attack except for a few special moves that can't be evaded and after he's evaded he will counter attack so evade and counter is a completely overpowered ability and you could imagine what would happen if you had a weapon that had uh, evade and counter plus stone strike or something like that then it's literally it's game over and you can just roam around and just do whatever you want so interesting weapons but still I think for weapons I don't really have anything good to customize other than the ability that it has I mean, using a black magic sphere just to get magic plus 10%, it seems a bit excessive, so I'm not going to use that. Okay, let's talk to everyone, and then uh, progress the story. 
Who is that singing? The Faith. Oh. Huh? The Faith? What? It can sing? Of course it can. Don't be a fool. Well, to be honest, we've never really seen a Faith, so we don't really know what they are. Whoa. Easy. <laughs> Friends, huh? First time a non L bed called me that. Oh. Just give her five or six more years and she might be competing with Lulu for my affections. I'm sure that Maester Micah will listen to us. Never like Maester Micah. This place smelled different now. Kimari not know if this good or bad. Well, Waka seems to certainly think it's bad, and so does Titus. So, let's talk to Oren and trigger the next cutscene. Jack used to sing this song. <laughs> yeah, over and over. <laughs> but not this good, that's for sure. Another trait you share. Uh, what? You were listening? Jeez, can I get a little privacy? Your singing reminded me of Spira. All right, you're not originally from Xanarkin, are you? You homesick? Maybe. Say, how'd you get to Xanarkind anyway? Sin? Uh huh. I thought so. That proved it. Sin was the link between Xanarkind and Spira. Which means, if we kill Sin, I'll never be able to go home. Okay, I think once I leave this little area, then the cutscene will trigger. So, yeah, it's as Titus thought. You know, if this whole sin thing, so, sin thing goes through, then he's stuck here for good. But I'm pretty sure if you asked him right now, would you rather rid Spirit of Sin and uh, stay here? Or would you rather try and go back home and let these people all eventually get killed by Sin? Then I'm pretty sure that at this stage he would um, do whatever he had to do to defeat Sin with his friends. Hmm? The singing stopped. <gasps> There's something here. The ground. Then I knew that Sin really was my old man. For the first time, I was finally able to believe it. The song you were listening to. What is it this time? Xanarkind. Ah, you homesick too? That's not your world anymore. You're sin now. Hey. 
hey, I'm older now, you know? I know. You want this to end. I'll find a way, promise. I do like that camera effect where they where they uh, move the camera forwards but zoom out at the same time. So it changes the, the perspective. It's pretty cool. <laughs> the first shot that I saw there when I first played, I thought, shit, I'm back in Besaid again. <laughs> it's like uh, Sin decided to dump us back to the beginning of the of the journey. That would have been hilarious. Sin's just like, nope, try again. This is a funky looking environment. Hmm, where am I? I forgive you this time. Be good for a while, okay? I love that Sin just kind of came down to just listen to some music and he ended up probably accidentally just kind of, you know, taking these guys to some random desert. That's just how Sin rolls. Okay, there was quite a few boss battles today and it's been a fairly decent recording session today. So I think I'm going to end it here today and we'll continue from the Oasis in the next recording session. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys some more very soon.